Hello everyone. Welcome to the discussion on digital signal processing. Myself Sivanandam working as assistant professor in ECE department of Sri Sharmuga College of Engineering and Technology Salem. So in this lecture we will discuss about the basics of signals and system as well as how the system can be analyzed and how the filtering systems are designed. First of all we will discuss about what is a signal and what is a system. So consider that a temperature variation from the morning till evening. In the morning time we have the temperature somewhat lesser. In the noon time we have the temperature risen to some higher level. Again in the evening time it is getting dropped. That means here the heat energy is varying with respect to time. Such a signal, such a parameter can be termed as signal. That means a signal is defined as any physical quantity that varies with respect to an independent variable. Here the temperature is varying with respect to the time. Similarly, we can also tell a voltage signal as the best example for signal. There the amplitude of the voltage signal is varying with respect to time. A signal can be defined for every instant of time or it can be defined for some discrete instance of time or some specific instance of time. Based on that we can classify signals as analog signal or continuous time signal and discrete time signal. Analog signal represents a signal that has amplitude of the signal that is specified for every instances of time in the range minus t to plus t. On the other hand, discrete time signal has amplitude defined only for some specific instant of time or amplitude of the signal is specified only for some discrete instance of time. Now we will have a look at this diagram analog signal and discrete time signal. The first figure represents continuous time sine wave or analog signal while the next one represents discrete time version of the same sine wave. That means here the amplitude is defined from 0 to 40. That means from n equal to 0, t equal to 0 up to t equal to 40. For every time instant, the magnitude is defined here. Nothing is missing here. The sine wave is defined for every instant of time. Therefore, this is analog signal. While in the second diagram, we can see that the signal is defined only for some specific instance of time. In between these two points, the amplitude is not defined. It does not mean that the amplitude is zero here. On the other hand, it is not defined for us. Therefore, the discrete time signal, which is represented in the diagram 2, is defined for only specific instant of time. Therefore, it is discrete time signal. How can we get a discrete time signal from an analog signal? By means of a process called sampling. That means, it is used to convert an analog signal into a discrete time signal. What is sampling? It is the process of converting analog signal into discrete time signal. How it is performed? By taking amplitude of the continuous time signal at regular interval of time, we can get the discrete time signal. How fast we should sample and why we should obey this condition and all. Say for instance, we are taking samples from the continuous time signal and we are getting discrete time version of that. Then we are doing some processing. Again, if we require the original analog signal back from the discrete time signal, we need the complete recovery without any loss of the original content. So in that case, we need to obey set, we need to have performed the sampling by obeying certain condition by means of the sampling theorem. So the sampling frequency should be very fast such that Fs should be greater than 2 into Fm. That means Fs represents sampling frequency while Fm represents maximum frequency of the analog signal. Where Fs is sampling rate or sampling frequency, Fm is maximum frequency of the original signal. We all know that frequency is inverse of time interval. So at regular interval we are making the time sampling process that should be very quick. Otherwise the signal will be lost. Next we will discuss about what is a system. Here we have an example of that. A bike moves when we give acceleration. That means when we when the input signal is applied in the form of acceleration, the bike is responding by movement. Similarly, consider a thermometer. If a thermometer is there, the heat energy variation will be noted in that 
transducer present in that and along with that some circuit is there that one converts the heat energy variation into a digits into display in display form we are able to see the heat energy variation that means the bike as well as thermometer both are termed as systems what it is doing it is performing some operation on the input signal that is given to us given to it and it produces some response to that that is called output so in general a system is a well defined rule or a mathematical operator that performs some operation on the input signal and produces some response for the determined output here the input is applied to the system and the response is obtained there next classifications of signal both continuous time signal and discrete time signal class is classified as follows periodic a periodic even signal odd signal deterministic and random signal energy signal and power signal also what is a periodic signal if the signal is repeating for certain interval of time that means if the behavior is repeating for certain interval of time then the signal is periodic signal consider for example sine wave we all know that sine 0 0 sine 360 0 sine 720 0 that means the amplitude is repeating for every 360 degree or 2 pi radians for a sine wave therefore it is a periodic signal if there is no such repetition then the signal is called a periodic signal now the condition for periodicity is x of t plus t x of small t plus capital t equal to x of small t for all t the smallest possible value of capital t is termed as fundamental period next we will discuss about even signal and odd signal here even signal is also called symmetric signal and odd signal is called anti symmetric signal that means with respect to origin there lies the symmetricity consider the case of cos function or cosine function cos pi minus 1 cos minus pi is also minus 1 therefore x of t equal to x of minus t that means cos pi equal to cos of minus pi if this condition is satisfied then the signal is even signal next we will discuss about sine function in sine function we don't have that symmetricity but we have other kind of symmetricity sine 90 equal to minus sine of minus 90 that means x of t equal to minus x of minus t a signal is said to be odd signal or anti symmetric with respect to origin if it obeys this condition x of t equal to minus x of minus t next we will discuss about deterministic signal and random signal first we all know that electrons move in random motion and due to that noise voltage is generated but we cannot determine specific velocity of that or the behavior cannot be specifically determined we should go for probability probabilistic methods or statistical parameters that means if the characteristic or the behavior of the signal can be determined by means of some equation then it is deterministic signal otherwise it is random signal consider this case x of k x of t equal to 3 sin 200 pi t if you substitute t equal to 0 t equal to some negative value t equal to some positive value we can determine the x of t amplitude for all three values of t that means past present and future values can be determined with this equation for the specific signal on the other hand we cannot determine the behavior of the electronic random motion because basically it is random in nature such signals are called noise signals or random signal they can be analyzed by means of autocorrelation power spectral density such statistical parameters next one energy signal and power signal the energy signal of a and signal of energy of a signal is determined by summation n equal to minus 1 plus unity magnitude of x of n the whole square this is from the equation uh, power equal to v into i and if the resistance value is given as r equal to v by i then we can substitute v square by r or you can also write i square r if we are considering the resistance value to be 1 ohm then we can equate energy equal to r square sorry i square or 
v square so in general we can write x of n square similarly energy signals have finite energy and zero average power power signals have finite power and infinite energy next category is digital signal a digital signal is quantized in both time and amplitude digital signals are usually represented as series of ones and zeros how they are obtained they are obtained they are obtained by means of quantizing and then encoding that is a discrete time signal we will get that so we have a discussion about signals in system and we need some elementary signals to analyze that that is unit set sequence unit sample sequence or unit impulse sequence prime sequence unit set sequence is a is having magnitude 1 for origin as well as positive values of n for negative values of n it is not having magnitude 0 so unit sample sequence or unit impulse sequence is represented as del of n equal to 1 for n equal to 0 otherwise it is 0 next one ram sequence it is a linear function or of n equal to n into u of n next one classification of system both continuous time system and discrete time system can be classified as linear non linear time variant time invariant stable and unstable causal and non causal static and dynamic what is linearity or linear system if a system obeys superposition principle then the system is called linear system that means we are applying inputs in a separate manner then we are getting the output next we are applying the inputs in combined manner then we are getting the output if the separately obtained output combination are equal to the response when we applied the input in combined manner then the system is linear system that is linear combination of inputs must produce a response such that it is equal to the linear combination of responses when individual inputs are applied t of ax1 of t plus bx2 of t equal to a y1 of t plus b y2 of t next time invariant system or time invariance property if the behavior or characteristic of a system is independent of any change in time then the system is time variant time invariant don't think that the time the output is not varying that is not the case behavior is not varying or the property is not varying for a time invariant system for a time invariant system we can take the example of broadcasting of a cricket match consider that if the match is being started at 1 pm and due to some microseconds delay some we are receiving by 1 1 pm and some few microseconds delay then again if the match is being started at 5 pm we will receive the signal at our tv receiver 5 pm then some five few microseconds delay that microseconds delay is constant irrespective of the starting time of the match then the system is time invariant system if there is any variation in the particular delay definitely it is not a time invariant system it is time variant system next classification stability or stable system if the bounded input produces bounded output then the system is stable system bounded refers to finite and bounded refers to infinite next one causal system if the present output of a system is dependent on past values of input and present values of input then the system is causal system here x of n present value of input x of n minus 2 delayed form of input and this is present output so we can analyze the signal in time domain or we can go for transformation but why should we go for transformation if we represent the time signal in time domain we can know the amplitude and space space and time values but we cannot know the frequency ranges present in the signal therefore we need to take transformation either frequency either fourier transform is a transform laplace transform discrete cosine transform or any other transforms in order to understand the frequencies present in the signal why should we require that thereby we can design filtering systems so these are the discussion about basics of signal and system next in the next session we will discuss about the tools required for analyzing different systems